it's everywhere. But it's not a question. It's got this idea. Well, that's a silly question. No, why, why is it everywhere? You see this on film? Yeah. Just say, yeah. so Mark, God by his spirit. Mark, Mark, we speak English, correct? Mark, we speak English. We're going on a massive tangent. One minute. Tangible felt presence is glory. No, we don't believe that, no. Jesus was that temple, bringing the glory of God. No, step by step. Come this side, because you know we're this guy. So we can come this side, eh? So, listen, Mark. We're talking about God, and you are speaking English. Correct? You said God's everywhere. You find everywhere to us. He's in all places at all times. Doesn't in it doesn't inhabit um, tangible material things. So it's not everywhere. Sorry? It doesn't inhabit tangible things, so it's not everywhere. Yeah, but, but, that, but to say that will be, that's more of a Hindu understanding, that's pantheism, that everything is God and... No, what we say as a Muslim, we say so, God is separate yeah, from his creation, yeah, yeah. but he so sees everything, he yeah. knows everything, yeah. and he hears everything. Yeah. But would you say God's yeah. everywhere, if you mean in that one, God knows everything, yeah. he hears everything, and he sees everything, and he's yes, above his creation, he oh. separates from his creation, yeah. then we agree. Okay, okay. Look, he's holy, huh? he's separate from his okay. creation, but there's also the sense in which he's, trans he's imminent in his creation. He's imminent in his creation. And we see that right from the beginning. In what do you mean by that? Imminent by his creation. Well, he's present with his people. That, uh, 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 his presence. Let me, I don't, so by his presence, that, that was manifest. No, for example, in, in, the, uh, in the Exodus, yeah. there's like um, he guided his people, a pillar of cloud by uh, by day, and fire by night. Again, that was a tangible sign of his presence with his people. So with his essence, he was inside the creation. With his essence. Yeah, so this transcendent God is at, at the same time imminent, present with his creation, but he's not, he's not in, in rocks and uh, in animals. To be honest, I, 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 you're not making no sense to me. I have respect. Okay. <laughs> so you're saying God is not everywhere, he's above his creation. Yeah. On the other hand, said God he was with his, with his eminence, with his creation. Yeah. Yeah. Eminence, are you saying by aiding them? Taking care of them, guiding them, we do agree. But if you say God by his essence was here, that is contradiction. But what, let me say, sorry, sorry, because okay, yeah, sure. you and I, we believe that God has attributes and, he, and, and names. God is perfect, correct? God knows everything all the time, correct? God sees everything all the time. So if if I claim to be God, will he have to be there? My God forbid, without any doubt, yeah, I'm not God. But imagine I say I'm God, I know everyone's name, but I don't know your name. Can I be the same God who knows everything? Yeah, I know what you're doing. Okay. See, there is an element of mystery. But God, when he took on frail human flesh and lived among us, necessarily chose to limit himself because, for example, in a human body he couldn't be in all places at all times because he was constrained by a body. In the same way, the infant Jesus did not know, he wasn't born knowing Einstein's theory of relativity. There were certain things that he laid aside, his majesty, his glory, in order to be fully human. But what is significant is the New Testament of the Bible never says that he's anything less than God by that necessary limitation. So Mark, that's God, not everything. Sorry? That's God, not everything. Yes, yes, it so is. Jesus is God by different, has to know everything. But, but Jesus, by becoming fully man, chose to necessarily limit that knowledge. So, for example, that's why he's What do you mean? What do you mean? Look, 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 look. Yeah. If God knows everything, if you ask about God, you say, yes, he knows everything. Hear me out, Mark. Yeah. If you ask, when I ask you about God, say, yes, without any, like, you know, hesitancy. Yes. But when I ask you about Jesus, you say, no, but, but, but. So if Jesus God, you should not say, but, you should ask the question, just as you answered it, uh -huh. with yeah. saying, God, yes, yes now everything. Understand. The fact that now you're giving justification for God not knowing everything, but on the other hand, you said, yes, God knows everything, that is a clear-cut contradiction. Yes, hear me, hear me, hear me. Yeah. One thing that you have to understand, you as a Christian, you believe Jesus is not a father, correct? Yes. He's a son. Yes. So Jesus as God is not a father, correct? Yes. So when even that, 
you saying Jesus came as a human being and he uh, limited himself would not help you. You know why? Because according to Mark 13, 32, Jesus said, no one knows the day and the hour, not even the angels in the heaven, nor the son, but only the father. So my question to you, according to Jesus, does Jesus as God and the Holy Spirit know the hour? I've already explained that there was a necessary limitation. So that was one of the things that during his earth he was not privy to. No, no, as God, no, as God. No, no, you believe Jesus had two nature. Mark, you believe Jesus had two nature. It's not a problem because we believe God is trying, therefore God does know everything because the Father was still in heaven. I understand that. But you believe God had two, Jesus had two nature. There was God nature and human nature. As human, he didn't know everything. As God, he knows everything. As God, yes, but but that but that God can that can choose to limit his knowledge. No, but uh, no, no, Mark, Mark, there's a problem here, Mark. In order to be Mark, Mark, there's a problem here. You are telling me Jesus was lying. No, no, no. I'm okay, I tell you why. I tell you why. I tell you why. I tell you why. Yeah. I'm just saying that what you're saying is a contradiction. Okay, no, I understand from your. No, hear me, hear me out, Mark. I'm saying it's a mystery. Mark, imagine I know my name. Imagine I know my name. Yeah. But you know what? I'm, I'm choosing not to tell you my name. But there's different between telling you, I'm not going to tell you, and by telling you, I do not know my name. If I say I do not know my name, which I know I know my name, that is a clear, pure cat lion. Do you agree with that? Yeah. Okay. So when Jesus, Jesus, did he know that him, he limits himself, and when, as God, he knows everything. So when he said he doesn't know the hour, was he lying or speaking the truth? No, he was speaking the truth. So, Jesus, so therefore, let us follow, so Mark, let us follow Jesus. He doesn't know the hour. Why are you making it up? He knows, he doesn't know. He was man and God at the same time. If Jesus, our mighty messenger, told, told, told us clearly, he doesn't know the hour, why you try to justify and explain something which doesn't make any sense? Mark, out of respect. Yeah, no, because... And this is exactly what Allah said in the Quran, Mark. Yeah, when... It's the Prophet Muhammad. Yeah, okay, when... When Jesus asked Peter who he was, um, he said, you are the Christ, the, the Son, the Blessed One. And Jesus said, flesh and blood was not revealed to you, but my Father in heaven. So all I can do is share and pray that God by his Spirit would open the eyes of your understanding. So is Jesus, is Jesus, is Jesus, is Jesus, because you can't arrive at this by so logic Philip, alone. Reason but, can only take you so far, then you need revelation. No, but no, I agree, I agree to some extent. Yeah. Eh? That God gave us intellect, correct? Yeah. He gave us intellect. Yes. Yes. He gave us intellect for you and I. When a prophet's message just comes with the legislation and the message to analyze it, to differentiate between a true prophet and a false prophet. Yes. Because if oh, me, yeah. me, if every prophet comes to us and he says, you know what? Don't use your brain. Just believe. So we have to believe in every liar, foolish prophet. But the fact that God, God gave us intellect yeah. in the Quran, Allah always remind us and he remind as a favor that the intellect is a favor that God gave it to mankind in order to utilize it to determine what is the truth and what is the falsehood. What I will tell you, I'll make it clear to you. According to the according to the Bible, according to the Bible, Jesus said, the only true God is the Father. The only true God is the Father. Hear me, hear me. Yeah, John 17. The Holy Spirit is the God. Is yes, the Holy yes, Spirit yes. God? Yeah. But according because, to Jesus, yeah, you, you could skip to the No, let's skip. I'm taking you back. I'm showing you clearly that in the Bible, Jesus are given a clear cut statement. What Christians are doing, instead of going to the clear cut statement and following it, they go to any clear statement. Jesus said, the only true God is the Father. So the Holy Spirit is not the Father. Jesus is not the Father. So clearly, Jesus and the Holy Spirit are not God. Okay, so Can someone get it for yeah, me? Let, uh, let me come back. Yeah, um, so, 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 yeah. so reason, <laughs> you talked about uh, the, in, the use of the intellect. Yes. Uh, and I agree to an extent. I mean, for example, Romans 1 tells us that we ought to be able to discern through creation, through conscience, that there is a God to yeah. whom we're accountable. Yes. Because conscience tells us that. But yeah. reason can only take us so far. You see, the fundamental difference is that our reason is fallen because we're fallen beings. Therefore, we don't think correctly about God. That's why we need revelation. That's why we need God by His Spirit to open the eyes of our understanding, to discern spiritual truth. I mean, Jesus, Jesus spoke to the religious teachers of his day who ought to have had the knowledge, but they didn't understand what he was saying. 
He spoke to fishermen, simple fishermen. They understood because God, by His Spirit, revealed these things to them. No, no, so it's not about they were, they were honest. honest. No, they were honest. No, 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 Mark, yeah. they were honest. It's not about yeah. God give them spirits. No, they were honest people. Some people are stubborn. Hey, yeah. They are stubborn. For example, we have the same story in the Quran. Mm -hmm. Prophet um, uh, Saleh, mm -hmm. Prophet Saleh, who said to people, they said to him, we cannot understand your language. Even though he was speaking the same language they were speaking, he, he was from them. He's like an Englishman speaking to another Englishman. He's, the reason they were saying that, that we cannot understand you anymore, not they were not understanding him, they were pretending to not understand him because why? He was speaking the truth no which hurt their feeling. But please, can you go back to the point? We just said that only the truth goes to the Father. Good. You said that you have to be spiritually discerning in order to understand you need revelation. Yeah. Yeah. Let me ask you this. Sorry. Would you consider Jesus to be <laughs> someone who understood things? Is he a perfect role model, a perfect human being to follow? Yes. Yes? So when Jesus makes that statement, yes, was he spiritually discerned when he makes a statement that this is eternal life so that they may know that you are the only true God? Yeah. Yes? Would you not consider the statement of Jesus about your church's statement, which believes in the Trinity, the doctrine of Trinity? So when Jesus is clearly telling you that pure monotheism, belief in only one God, i.e. the Father in this, in this context. Yeah, let's look at the text. I have a class. I have to go. My brother Hashim will be carrying on me. I have a class of five, man.